There's never been a more confusing time to purchase a camera than right now in 2018. There's so many different types of cameras that you can purchase from your compact digitals to micro four thirds to mirrorless to full frame and APS-C digital SLRs. So there are so many choices and a lot of people I find are running into the dilemma now trying to decide not only which camera brand to purchase, but which format they should be purchasing in order to best meet their needs. So I thought I'd address that in this video and have a bit of a discussion about these different formats to hopefully guide you along the way and put you in the right direction for your next camera purchase. Now I've been shooting with the Canon DSLRs for the past 10 years or so, and I've been very accustomed to the full frame capabilities the Canon glass, and there's certainly the ergonomics that come with these larger DSLR cameras. On the positive side, they're very solid, very sturdy and reliable, and for a professional camera, deliver perhaps the best results available today. But this paradigm is starting to be challenged with the continual improvement in the micro four thirds cameras that we're now finding from manufacturers such as Olympus and also the Sony uh, compact mirrorless cameras such as the A7 and A9 are really giving these DSLRs a run for their money. So much so that many professionals in the past couple of years have been switching over to these formats. And the reason that they're switching over is that the mirrorless format provides the ability to produce a more compact camera. It's more lightweight and in many respects, it can be faster to shoot with as well. Now, the difference in quality between, let's say a micro four thirds format, which is really compact, like the Olympus OMD that I have here and a DSLR is somewhat noticeable because the image sensor is much smaller on this camera. But when it comes to the Sony A7, for example, they actually have a full frame sensor, which means you're really getting the same quality of image that you're getting out of your DSLR, yet in a much smaller body. To understand the significance of sensor size when it comes to image quality, I've put together some graphics on screen that show you the difference in size. In the first image, you can see the blue square, which represents the image sensor you would find on a full frame camera as compared to the green square, which sits within. And as you can see, it's nearly half the size. So in terms of the amount of pixels and the size of the pixels, the full frame format promises to deliver a superior image. Full frame cameras tend to offer upwards of 24 to 50 megabyte sensors, whereas micro four third sensors tends to be anywhere from 16 to 20 megapixels. It's not always about the megapixel count, of course, but also the quality of pixels. For most photos shot in daylight, it's hard to see the difference on screen, but for low light photography and video, the full frame format tends to show its superiority as soon as you zoom in or crop into the image. This next graphic tells a similar story, but but in addition depicts the APS-C sensor size, which you can see outlined in blue. This is somewhere in between the size of a full frame sensor and the micro four thirds sensor. The APS-C is another common sensor found on mid-range DSLRs and compact cameras. It's not just the sensor size that makes all of these cameras unique in their own way. The next and most important differentiator between DSLR cameras and mirrorless is the removal of the mechanical mirror that is part of the fabric of a DSLR. The mirror needs to be there as it allows you to see the image in the viewfinder as you frame the shot. As soon as you release the shutter, it moves out of the way, allowing the light to pass through the lens and onto the sensor plane, which sits behind the mirror. Then once captured, the mirror returns into place. So a lot of space and mechanical engineering goes into making this happen at speeds that are fast enough to allow you to capture images at high frame rates. You can get speeds of up to eight to 16 frames per second on higher end DSLRs, but they tend to max out at around this range. If you look at the second image depicting the mirrorless camera, you can see that there is no mirror and that the light can pass through the lens and directly on the sensor as soon as you depress the shutter. So there's no need to wait for a mechanical mirror to move in and out of place during your shots. 
The Sony A9 captures 24.2 megapixel images as fast as 20 frames per second in RAW or JPEG for up to over 200 shots. And it does this with no EVF blackout, which you get on DSLR cameras. Compare that to the top of the range 1DX, which will only deliver 14 frames per second RAW autofocused, or at most, 16 frames per second with no autofocus. Because of these advantages in the mirrorless format, combined with the fact that the Sony A7 and A9 cameras have full frame sensors, we've seen a significant increase in the number of professionals starting to shoot with the Sony range of cameras. It looks like Canon and Nikon are starting to take the mirrorless format more seriously and there's been many rumors this year that they're both working to produce a mirrorless professional camera. Now there's already a couple of options available in their ranges for the consumer market, but the lenses that they take don't necessarily appeal to the professional segments. So what we might be seeing from both Canon and Nikon this year is a professional mirrorless format that will be able to work with their existing lineup of professional lenses. And if that's the case, we're going to see some radical transformation of camera bodies over the next couple of years. And I think this will be a very interesting space to watch. If you've heard of any of these rumors or you've got any comments about this, whether you think you would prefer to go with a mirrorless format or you're happy with your DSLR format, put your comments in the comments box below. Certainly I'm all for the change and I can see many advantages there. To be honest with you, I like the large format that we get in the DSLR format. I don't wanna see the cameras shrink down too much but I could do with a lighter camera and I could certainly do with the advantages of the mirrorless format to get faster shutter speeds, but I would love to see them be compatible with my existing Canon glass. So if that's gonna happen, I can see some massive success in the area for both Canon and Nikon. And I think certainly it's long overdue and it needs to happen if they wanna remain competitive in this current marketplace. And if you've got any opinions about the difference between full frame and mirrorless, and whether you lean towards one or the other for any particular reason, once again, feel free to hit us up in the comments box below. And don't forget, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified of up and coming video releases. Thanks again. See you on the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.